Welcome to Care Coordination and Interoperable Health IT Systems Standards for Interoperable Health IT Lecture B. This unit will cover the following learning objectives. 1. Explain why standards are required, how they are developed, and how adoption is encouraged. 2. Name and describe the types of interoperability standards available. 3. Summarize functionality of HL7V2, CDA, CCDA, and FHIR. And 4. Recognize HL7V2 messages, CDA documents, and FHIR resources. This lecture will give a survey of standards for healthcare interoperability. There are several types of healthcare interoperability standards. There are lower level standards, and these might not necessarily be healthcare specific. There are the healthcare content interoperability standards, terminology standards, and then there are implementation guides and profiles. Lower level standards are standards that are necessary to ensure interoperability, but not with the actual healthcare content. It is lower level in the sense like the wires that you need to connect in a network. These are referred to the Open System Interconnect Models 1 to 6, which are at the lower levels. Also, it is important for the security of the data being transmitted. The actual content is not of consideration. Some standards that are in this space include EBXML, XML, REST, UML, SOAP, TCPIP, ATNA, SSL, and OAuth2. These are many acronyms and communication standards are beyond the scope of this unit, but you can go to Component 9 to learn about networking and how lower level standards are commonly employed. Our focus here is on the application layer where interoperability implies that the system understands and can use the information at that application level. However, we will briefly mention two lower level standards developed specifically for healthcare interoperability on the next two slides. One example of a lower level standard specifically developed for healthcare interoperability is the NWIN standards. NWIN stands for the Nationwide Health Information Network and there are sets of specifications that were created by this organization. They created two main specifications one set called Connect, and the other set was called Direct. Originally, the Nationwide Health Information Network, NWIN, was called NHIN. You will often hear about NWIN Connect and NHIN Direct because that was its previous name. We often called it NHIN Direct. Connect was the first specification that was created. It was created to provide an underlying framework to support health information exchange across the country. Originally, it was ideal to have specified standards that would allow anyone to plug into this nationwide network. A few years ago, Connect had ambitious goals to do this, and several organizations are participating. Connect is now managed by an organization called the Sequoia Project, eHealth Exchange Initiative, and the link is provided here. However, it was identified that Connect was too complex for the initial use case of sending a summary of care document from one provider to another when a patient was referred or transitioned. A simpler solution called NHIN Direct came into the picture. NHIN Direct is a simplified version of Connect that does more of a point-to-point -point connection between systems with a secure mailbox analogy. So in short, Secure Direct Health Exchange is at a more local level among trusted providers using a directed push mechanism. Direct is required in certified health information technology that is used for meaningful use and merit-based incentive payment system, or MIPS. Due to its use in meaningful use, it has widespread adoption. In this diagram, we see that Dr. A's office used NHIN Direct to securely send a clinical summary, also known as the CCDA, to Dr. B's office via the internet and it is a concept of a HISP, or Health Information Service Provider. So the sender has a HISP, which is kind of like having an email exchange box, like Outlook or a similar exchange. The sender is sending from his outbound secure mailbox to the receiver's Health Information Service Provider. 
This NHIN Direct provides addresses for the sender and the receiver. The secure packaging around the message and the message where the actual healthcare content standard would exist. Let's talk more about the healthcare content standards. These are interoperability standards that are needed to describe the structure and meaning of information sent and the protocol for sending it. There are also rules on what the receiver should do. Some examples could be a standard API with variables exchanged, a standard set of messages and trigger events, or a structured clinical document. Health Level 7, or HL7, has created three general purpose standards for interoperability in the space of healthcare content standards. The three primary interoperability standards in use for Health Level 7 are Version 2, CDA, or Clinical Document Architecture, and FIRE, or Fast Health Interoperability Resources. HL7 Version 2 provides a way of communication all different types of healthcare information via formatted messages. CDA is a structured document standard representing any clinical statement and meant to represent documents in healthcare. FIRE is an application programming interface or API that is used to query and update various types of healthcare resources. Due to the prevalence of these three standards in healthcare interoperability, these will be covered further in other lectures in this unit. DICOM, or Digital Imaging and Communication in Medicine, is the standard that is used to represent an image. It is developed by the American College of Radiology and the National Electrical Manufacturers Association. An image is a very important piece of information in healthcare. There are many types of diagnostic tests that produce images, like X-rays and CT scans. Images are often shared within an organization between the radiology information system and a picture archive system where the images are stored. Images can also be sent between organizations. However, due to their large size, a link into the source system is sometimes provided instead. When images are sent between systems, they are usually in the DICOM format. This picture shows a little bit of the standards layout. The National Council for Prescription Drug Programs, or NCPDP, publishes a standard called SCRIPT, which is a messaging standard for communicating electronic prescriptions, also known as e-prescribing. NCPDP SCRIPTS provides a standard way to communicate new prescriptions, cancellations, refills, dispenses, and queries. Systems certified for ONC 2011 and ONC 2014 support new prescriptions. ONC 2015 certified systems support all of the functions. Here are examples of NCPDP script in two different formats. There is an EDI, or Electronic Data Interchange format. This is more of a legacy format. A more modern format is an XML format. Example messages are excerpted from the NIST test data for ONC 2014 certification for e-prescribing. Another information standard in healthcare is X12. X12 is important because it provides the standard messages for communication with health insurance companies. This is how it communicates claims and how it communicates authorizations, except for pharmacy. Here is a list of particular transactions or messages used for claims and authorizations. The 270 message is for eligibility coverage or benefit inquiry, and the 837 message is for healthcare claim. HIPAA requires that X12 be used when providers communicate with payers. Terminology standards are extremely important for achieving interoperable health IT. So while a content standard will tell you the different data fields that must be communicated, if any of those fields are coded, then knowing those coding systems and the value sets that can be used in those fields is extremely important. That is why terminology standards are so important in interoperability, especially when you try to reach any large scale. It is not ideal to negotiate and harmonize terminologies. If you use local value sets, there would be an exponential amount of harmonization work. Terminology standards can range from just a simple small value set with abbreviated representation to a complex terminology that includes synonyms and relationships.
A great example of a complex terminology standard is SNOMED CT. SNOMED CT is one of the most sophisticated standard clinical terminologies used in healthcare. It includes concepts, synonyms, hierarchies of concepts, and relationship between concepts. In the picture, the SNOMED CT concept of common cold is represented. It names a name, an ID, and synonyms like, quote, head cold, end quote, and, quote, cold, end quote. It has defining relationships, which help to better explain its meaning and allows users to classify the concept. For example, an application could query for all the SNOMED CT concepts. It has a parent concept of, quote, viral upper respiratory tract infection, end quote, and no children concepts. As defining relationships, it is related to a virus, has a finding set, has a pathological process, and a whole series of synonyms. This slide shows terminology systems and value sets that have been used as part of the ONC Certification of Health IT. Here is a list of terminology systems and value sets, but there are more. LOINC is a code system for identifying laboratory and clinical observations. It is used for lab tests, radiology tests, document IDs, and other data types. SNOMED CT is a rich clinical terminology that covers a lot of different terms. Rx norm is a standardized nomenclature for clinical drugs. CVX is for administered vaccines. The Centers for Disease Control maintains race and ethnicity terminology. IS has several code sets, including ISO language codes. UM, or Unified Code of Units of Measure, provides terminology for units often used with result values. ICD-10 is what is being used right now in the United States for diagnoses. And then there are CPT procedure codes. The National Library of Medicine has a value set authority that helps manage value sets used in certified systems. This is not an exhaustive list. We just went through many kinds of standards, so let's recap. Lower level standards are for interoperability at the application layer and for data security. The lower level standards we discussed were NWIN Connect and NHIN Direct. A second type of standards is healthcare content standards, which describe the structure and meaning of information and the protocol for communicating it. The healthcare content standards we discussed were HL7V2, HL7CDA, HL7 Fire, DICOM, NCPDP, and X12. A third type of standards is terminology standards. Several common ones are SNOMED CT, LOINC, ICD 9, and ICD 10, RX Norm, and CPT. Let's now move on to the topic of implementation guides or profiles. Standard implementation guides are important because standards are often not specified enough to allow interoperability without negotiation and implementation specific code. The purpose of a standard implementation guide is to narrow variability by providing additional rules and constraint on top of the base standard specification. This is to solve a particular use case or to work in a particular jurisdiction. These implementation guides remove the optionality and variation and fill in the gaps that are often required to be filled when implementing standards. That means that less site-specific implementation work will be required. If an implementation guide is good enough and removes all variability and both the sending and receiving vendor fully comply to the guide, then their two products should be able to be connected together without having to implement custom translations between the systems. We call that plug-and-play interoperability. For example, the HL7V2 lab result message does not require that each result component be coded and does not require a particular code set. However, an implementation guide might choose to require the test code field and also require that only the LOINC code system be used. These requirements will ensure that there is less negotiation left for a particular implementation. Just such an implementation guide has been published in the United States by HL7. It is called the LRI specification, which is short for HL7 version 2.5.1 implementation guide. 
SNI Framework Laboratory Results Interface Implementation Guide released to STU US Realm. The LRI specification includes special guidance on how to implement lab results. It is especially tailored for the United States, but could be used in other countries as well. It includes terminology requirements. For example, it tells what value sets must be used to specify tests and their components, what codes must be used to specify microorganisms, and what codes must be used to specify units of measure. It also provides U.S.-specific implementation guidance on fields and makes certain fields required based on U.S. lab policy recommendations. Here are examples of implementation guides that are actually required for ONC 2015 Certification of Health IT. The first guide, QRDA, describes how to use HL7 CDA to specify a clinical quality measurement. The next one, CCDA, primarily describes a clinical summary for a patient and provides very specific guidance on how to represent and encode key data types of a care summary such as allergies, medications, problems, and results. The PHIN messaging guide for syndromic surveillance describes how to use HL7 version 2 to communicate syndromic surveillance information to a public health authority. HL7 v2.5.1 implementation guide for immunization messaging R1.5 describes how to use HL7 version 2 to communicate share immunization information between providers and public health authorities. These examples are meant to give you an idea of the kinds of implementation guides that are available and their usefulness. IHE uses the term integration profile instead of implementation guide. IHE implementation profiles organize and leverage the integration capabilities that can be achieved by coordinated implementation of communication standards such as DICOM, HL7W3C, and security standards. They provide precise definitions of how standards can be implemented to meet specific clinical needs. Many IHE profiles have widespread adoption. Whenever people implement the DICOM standard, they implement it by following an IHE implementation profile. IHE profiles have been developed for numerous functional domains, including cardiology, dentistry, eye care, pathology, and laboratory medicine, patient care coordination, patient care devices, pharmacy, quality, research and public health, radiation oncology, and radiology. Profiles have also been created in the domain called IT infrastructure, which supports common utility functions needed in healthcare interoperability. For example, the IHE XDS profile specifies how documents can be located and securely exchanged in an interorganizational context. The IHE PIX and PDQ profiles are often used by EMPIs and describe how patients can be matched in an interorganizational context. Imagine a patient presents in the emergency room at a city hospital which uses a Health Information Exchange or HIE. Using IHE PIX PDQ and IHE XDS the HIE is able to match the patient and locate records for the patient across the HIE's region and bring them back to the clinician treating the patient in the emergency room. In summary, implementation guides or integration profiles are specifications that describe how to implement a standard or set of standards for a specific use case. A specific implementation guide or profile might include one or more content standards, terminology standards, and lower level standards. It would describe how each one of the standards would be used together to provide interoperability. While base standards provide rules for interoperability, they are often too general and loose to implement. Implementation guides, on the other hand, provide practical specifications that have been honed to meet specific use cases. Whenever possible, it is best to implement standard implementation guides or integration profiles. This concludes Lecture B of Standards for Interoperable Health IT. To summarize, there are three types of interoperability standards, lower level, 
healthcare content, and terminology. Standards are needed to ensure interoperability, secure transmitted data, and describe structure, meaning, and protocol. Standards are not constrained to particular use cases and are not integrated with other standards leading to variability in implementation. Standard implementation guides or profiles solve this problem by providing additional rules and constraints to narrow variability in implementation of standards.